just blown out and swept. It's kind of hazy in here from all the dust and the dirt in here. But I swept this concrete floor as clean as it's going to get. Um, Buddy and I the other day bought this. Um, we bought two of these. They, it is a uh, waterproofing primer and sealer for wind-driven rain. Um, this is for concrete, for coated and uncoated vertical surfaces. So like, could be like basement walls. Obviously this is not a vertical surface, but it says goes on milky white and dries clear. It's a waterproof sealing uh, compound and it's for concrete. So uh, we're going to put this down on the concrete floor. It's going to be step one of tran like transforming the space into a livable space. Because it's a barn, um, I want to make sure that we make this space um, livable and comfortable and the first step is to get this to not have any leaks. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. It says that one of these covers 300 square feet and we have a little bit more than that. I think we have like 480 square feet in here, or 460 around there. So I got two of these just to be safe. Um, so it says surface prep, surface must be clean and dry, remove loose paint and excessive chalk, repair any cracks and surface breaks, cover the windows, doors, use caution when applying on windy days. It says two coats are required for waterproofing bare vertical concrete. This is horizontal. I don't know if that makes a difference. Dry time is two to four hours. Ooh. I don't know if we can use this right now, guys. This says, don't apply if rain is expected within 12 hours or if temperatures fall below 50 degrees within 24 hours before or after application. It's supposed to get down to the 30s tonight, but I wonder if we put a space heater in here, if that would make a difference. Maybe we have Buddy's opinion. Okay, Buddy says it should be fine and It'll be closed up and we can put a space heater in here, so it should be good to go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply this and I have this roller and this um, end of our room that I'm gonna attach to the roller so I don't have to bend over to do it. So let's get started. I'm excited to do step one. Of a very long process, I'm sure. I don't know, guys. I hope I'm doing this right. But I've just poured, can you tell? I poured a little bit in this corner and I've just been basically pushing this up against the corners as I go. And it's almost like Elmer's glue. Like it looks a lot like Elmer's glue, and it's supposed to dry clear. It's not as thick as Elmer's glue, but it just, it's what it reminds me of. So I'm kind of just making sure it gets right up against the edge and kind of maybe underneath the concrete, underneath that, so that it kind of fits all the way underneath. We'll see.
Okay. Let me show you what one jug of that did. It got around to the perimeter all the way around and a little bit pulled in a couple feet some of the edges but I'm going to use the other jug of it to fill in this middle section but my main concern is waterproofing the edges where the majority of the water penetration can come in. What do you think buddy? It's good. This is discoloration. It goes on milky white and dries clear it oh, says. Okay. So you can see where you put it. Nice. Uh, but that one jug didn't go very far. Yeah. Did you get all the way up against the edges? Some of them look drier. I know. I did and you can see where I splashed up against oh. and I tried to push as much as I could underneath. Some of it's just a little bit thicker than others. But I think with that Loctite stuff, we do it next, yeah. it'll help. For sure. Which I haven't talked about yet, but I'll show you in a little bit about what we're going to do next. say 80 coverage is 82 oh, 80 to 300 feet 80 to 300 square feet so it's a pretty big difference in square foot square footage coverage um, but this area is 12 by 35 so whatever the math is on that um, and I got two jugs so I did the outside perimeter really well. The inside of, of the perimeter, it got a full coat of this. And I have a little bit extra, so I'm gonna go around just in some spots where I thought maybe a little bit thin on the exterior, and then just do a little bit more heavy coat on that and let this dry. Um, the fumes, not bad at all. Uh, it really doesn't smell like anything. Um, but I had both doors open and the windows open and not much of a smell so that's good it's not like your paint your typical paint smell so yeah i'm just gonna let this dry and then i'm gonna show you the next step that we're gonna do in order to get this waterproofed okay so step one was to put down that rust-oleum concrete waterproof barrier step two is going to be loctite loctite which Tell them what it is. Show. This is a Loctite non-sag concrete sealant. So this seals foundations to, um, you know, like basically what we're trying to do is seal the gap between the foundation and the wall. <clears throat> so since it's concrete, this is what we're going to use. And hopefully 
any rain that blows in from the big door openings will stay in the big area and not drift under the walls. Right. That's, that's the goal. Yeah. Because if you can tell around here, like the frame, the metal frame lays flat on the concrete so water is able to penetrate underneath when it blows in. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a bead of this uh, Loctite along the edge of the livable space. We don't really care so much about that side um, as we do here. So we're going to go around the edge at the bottom of the exterior and put... I'll probably do that side too, honestly. Think so? Yeah. Oh, okay. Just to Keep water that. from blowing in then underneath, right. yeah. yeah. So for now we're going to start and we're going to do that on the livable area to get, to get this uh, water tight. All right, so we ran out of the sealant, but Steph is cleaning up some of it a little bit right here. So Steph is cleaning up some of the excess spots. We were able to do this whole side and most of this side as well, just to try and keep the water from rolling back into the garage area. So we still have more to do, but we ran out of the sealant. I bought four tubes. I think that was enough. Not enough. Um, but I will show you. Today, I've worked a lot with Alora on practicing her bike riding balance, right? That was the whole goal, was to practice balance. We got up this morning, started practicing balance. She fell down a lot, she got back up a lot. She's about to go to horseback riding, so Steph's about to take her, but I wanna show you her progress in one day, in really one day of getting up early and working, and here it is, sun setting. All right, you ready, Alora? Okay, baby, show us what you got. Look at that. Look at that. <sighs> Blows my mind. One day. One day of working with her. She's already just cruising along like she's been riding her bike forever. All right, well, projects are continuing in the barn, but uh, I'm happy so far. Did you show the lights that you did? Have I shown the lights? Let's see. Well, I mean, I showed the first lights. Right, but the other ones. But we have back lights now. And we have lights on the other side of the bay door. They're all lined up uh, at even. the same height, even, around the barn, so it looks pretty nice. And Allure just went all the way down to G's. Yeah, she's just like a little speck down there. Here she comes back. Wow. She, she's loving that thing. I know. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us, and we will catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye.